Strays by Mark Richard. <clears throat> At night, stray dogs come up underneath our house to lick our leaking pipes. Beneath my brother and Mai's room, we hear them coughing and growling, scratching their ratted backs against the boards beneath our beds. We lie awake, listening, my brother thinking of names to name the one he is setting out to catch. Salute and Top Boy are high on his list. I tell my brother these dogs are wild and cowering. A bare-heeled stomp on the floor of our, off our beds sends them scuttling, spine bowed beneath the crawl space, beneath the open window. Sometimes when my brother is quick, he leans out and touches one, slipping away. Our father is meant to put the screens back on the windows for spring. He has even hauled them out of the storage shed and stacked them in the drive. He lays them one by one over saw horses to tack in the frames tighter and weave the patches against mosquitoes. This is what he means to do. But our mother that morning pulls all the preserves off the shelves onto the floor, sticks my brother and Mai's Easter Sunday drawings in her mouth, and leaves the house through the, through the field next door, cleared the week before the corn. Uncle Trash is our nearest relative with a car, and her mother has a good half-day head start on her father when Uncle Trash arrives. Uncle Trash runs his car up the drive in a big speed, splitting all the screens stacked there from their frames. There is an exploded chicken in the grill of Uncle Trash's car. They don't even turn off the motor as Uncle Trash slides out and our father gets behind the wheel, backing back over the screens, setting out in search of our mother. Uncle Trash finds out that he has left his bottle under the seat of the car. He goes into our kitchen, pulling out all the shelves our mother missed. Then he is in the towel box in the hall, looking, pulling, out stuff in stacks. He is in our parents' room, opening short doors. He is in the storage shed, opening and sniffing a mason jar of gasoline for the power mower. Uncle Trash comes up and asks, which way is it to town for a drink? I point up the road. Uncle Trash sets off, saying, Don't y'all burn the house down. My brother and I hang out in the side yard doing handstands until dark. We catch handfuls of lightning, bugs, and smear bright yellow on our shirts. It is late. I wash our feet and put us to bed. We wait for somebody to come back home, but nobody ever does. Lucky for me, when my brother begins to whine for our mother, the stray dogs show up under the house. My brother starts making up lists of new names for them, naming himself to sleep. Hungry, we wake up to something sounding in the kitchen, not like our mother fixing us anything to eat. It is Uncle Trash. He is throwing up and spitting blood into the pump-handled sink. I ask him did he have an accident, and he sends my brother upstairs for marathalate and Q-tips. His face is angled out of, from his head on one side, so that sided eye is shut. His good eye waters when he wiggles Luth's teeth with cut-up fingers. Uncle Trash said he had an accident all right. He says he was up in a card game, and then he was really up in a card game, so he bet his car, accidentally forgetting that our father had driven off with it in search of our mother. Uncle Trash says the man who won the card game went ahead and beat up Uncle Trash on purpose anyways. All day, Uncle Trash sleeps in our parents' room. We in the front yard can hear him snoring. My brother and I dig with spoons, making road beds and high trays for my, mit my tin metal trucks. In the evening, Uncle Trash comes down in one of our father's shirts, dirty, but cleaner than the one he had gotten beat up in. We have banana sandwiches for supper. Uncle Trash asks, do we have a deck of cards in the house? He says he wants to see, do his tooth cut fingers still bend enough to work? I have to tell him how our mother disallows card playing in the house, but that my brother has a pack of old maids somewhere in the toy box. When my brother goes out to look, I brag at how I always beat my brother out, out, leaving him the old maid. And Uncle Trash says, oh yeah, and digs around in his pocket for a nickel. He puts on the table. He says, we'll play a nickel a game. I go into my brother and Mai's room and get the band-aid box of nickels and dimes I sometimes short from the collection plate on Sunday. Uncle Trash is making painful faces, flexing his red painted fingers around the old maid deck of circus star cards, 
but he still shuffles, cuts, and deals a three-way hand, one-handed, and not much longer I lose my band-aid box of money and all the tin metal trucks of mine out in the front yard. Uncle Trash makes me go out and get them and put them on his side of the table. My brother loses a set of bowling pins and a stuffed beagle. In two more hands, we stack up our winter boots and coats with the hoods on Uncle Trash's side of our table. In the last hand, my brother and I step out of our shorts and underwears while Uncle Trash smiles, saying, And now, gentlemen, if you please, the shirt's off y'all's backs. Uncle Trash rakes everything my brother and I owned into the pillowcases off our bed and says, Let that be a lesson to me. He is off through the front porch door, leaving us buck naked at the table. His last words as he goes up the road, shoulders slinging his loot. Don't y'all burn the house down. I am burning hot at Uncle Trash. Then I am burning hot at our father for leaving us with him to look for our mother. Then I am burning hot at my mother for running off, leaving me with my brother, who is rubber chinning and face pouting his way into a good cry. This is only, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to take all we still have left that we own and throw it in, at my brother, and I do. And old maid cards explode on his face, setting him off on a really good howl. I tell my brother that making so much noise will keep the stray dogs away, and he believes it. And then I start to believe it when he gets later than when it gets later than usual, past the crickets and into the long moon over the trees. But they finally do come after my brother finally does fall asleep. So I just wait until I know there are several strays beneath the bedboards, scratching their rat matted backs and growling. I stomp on the floor. What is my favorite part about the dogs? Stomping and then watching them scatter in a hundred directions and then seeing them one by one collect in a pack at the edge of the field near the trees. In the morning, right off, I recognize the bicycle, bicycle coming wobble wheeling into the front yard. It's the one the colored boy outside Cuts uses to run lunches and ice water to the pulpwood truck. Mr. Cuts has working has working cut over timber on the edge of town. The colored boy that usually drives the bicycle snaps bottle caps off his fingers at my brother and I when we go to cuts with our mother to make groceries. We have to wait outside by the kerosene pump, out by the tar-papered lean-to shed, the pop crate place where the men sit around and Uncle Trash does his card work now. White people generally don't go into cuts unless they have to buy on credit. We at school know Mr. and Mrs. Cuts come from a family that eats children. There is a red metal tree with plastic wrapped toys in the window and a long candy counter case inside to lure you in. Mr. and Mrs. Cuts have no children of their own. They ate them during a hard winter and salted the rest down for sandwiches. The colored boy runs out to the pulpwood crew at noon. I count colored children going in to buy some candy to see how many make it back out but generally our mother is ready to go home way before I can tell. Our credit at cuts is short. The front tire catches in one of our tin metal trucks underground tunnels and Uncle Trash takes a spill. The cut crate bolted to the bicycle handlebars spills brown paper packages sealed with electrical tape out into the yard along with a case of champal and a box of cigars. Uncle Trash is down where he falls he lays asleep all day under the tree in the front yard, moving only just to crawl back into the wandering shade. We have supper sirloins, champagne, and cigars. Uncle Trash teaches us how to cross our legs up on the table after dinner, but says he'll go ahead and leave my brother and my cigars unlit. There is no outlook for our toys and my band-aid can of nickels and dimes. Checking all the packages, even checking twice again, the cut crate bolted on the front of the bicycle. Uncle Trash shows us a headstand on the table while drinking a bottle of champagne. Then he stands in the sink and sings, Gather my far-flung thoughts together. My brother and I chomp our cigars and clap in our hearts. We are low, and clap, but in our hearts we are low and lonesome. Don't y'all burn the house down, says Uncle Trash, paddling out the yard to cuts. My brother leans out our window with a rope coil and sirloin scraps strung on the strings. He is in a greasy fingered sleep when the strings slither like white snakes off our bed, over the sill, out into the fields beyond. 
There's July corn and no word from our parents. Uncle Trash doesn't remember the 4th of July or the 4th of July parade. Uncle Trash bunches cattails in the fenders of his bicycle and clips our old maid cards in the spokes and follows the fire engine through town with my brother and I in the front cut out crate throwing penny candy to the crowds. What are you trying to be? The colored men at cuts ask Uncle Trash when we end up the per when the parade ends up there. I spot a broken wheeled tin metal truck of mine in a colored child's hand, driving it in circles by the cut's front steps. Foolish, says Uncle Trash. Uncle Trash doesn't remember winning Mrs. Cuts in a card game for a day to come out and clean the house, and us, in the bargain. She pushes the furniture around with a broom and calls us abominations. There's a bucket of soap to wash our heads and a jar of sour-smelling cream for our infected bites. Fleas from under the house and mosquitoes through the windows. The screens are rusty squares in the driveway dirt. Uncle Trash leaves her his razor opened as long as my arm. She comes after my brother and I, and with it, to, to cut our hair. She says, we know better. My brother dives under the house and I'm up a tree. Uncle Trash doesn't remember July, but when we tell him about it, he says it sounds like July was probably a good idea at the time. In August, with the brown twisted corn in the fields next to the house, there is word from our parents. They are in the state capitol. One of them has been in jail. Uncle Trash is still promising screens. We get from cuts bug spray instead. I wake up in the middle of the night. My brother floats through the window, out into the yard. He and a stray have, have each other on the end of a rope. He reels her in and I make the tackle. Already I feel the fleas leave her rag matted coat and crawl over my arms and up my neck. We spray her down with a whole can of bug spray until her coat lathers like soap. My brother gets some matches to burn a tick like a grape out of her ear. The touch of the match covers her in a blue flame sweater. She's a fireball shooting beneath the house. By the time Uncle Trash and the rest of town get there, the fire warden says the house is fully involved. In the morning, I see our parents drive past where our house used to be. I see them go by again until they recognize the yard. Uncle Trash is trying to bring my brother out of the trance he is in by showing him how some tricks work on the left-handed steps of the stoop. Uncle Trash shows Jack away, queen in the whorehouse, and no money down. Our father says for Uncle Trash to stand up so he can knock him down. Uncle Trash says he deserves that one. Our father knocks Uncle Trash down again and tells him not to get up. If you get up, I'll kill you, our father says. Uncle Trash crawls on all fours across the yard, out into the road. Goodbye, Uncle Trash, I say. Goodbye, men, Uncle Trash says. Don't y'all burn the house down, he says. And I say, we won't. During the knocking down, nobody notices our mother. She is a flat-footed running rustle through the corn, all burned up by the summer sun.